Welcome, everyone. This is Jeremy Osterberger with Vic Magazine. Today, I'm joined by James Craig, Chief Executive Officer of Industrial Specialty Services. Hey, James, uh, thank you so much for giving us some time. Great to be here, Jeremy. Appreciate the uh, invitation. So, James, we're going to get into uh, Oklahoma State Cowboys football in a little while. But uh, for now, let's talk about uh, Industrial Specialty Services. Um, there's been a recent merger with leak sealers. And tell us what that move means for the refinery and petrochemical industry. Sure, that was a, a combination that we looked for um, to improve our leak sealing capabilities and especially responsiveness into the, uh, into the industry and our customer base. So it's been very important for us to be able to uh, provide better service to the customers that we have. And by picking up with uh, leak sealers, we had very little overlap in the customer base, and now we can then move some of our services um, that leak sealers didn't provide into that uh, customer base. So it's been a nice, a nice merge, and we believe is a benefit to the customer base that we both served. Yeah, that's a uh, great, uh, James. Give us a little bit of insight into sort of how that partnership was formed, and sort of uh, kind of what what brought about that move. Sure. We had um, a few years back had, had looked at uh, picking up a, a specialty technical service company and in going through that, we purchased uh, ISS out of brand Safeway, no longer associated at all with brand Safeway. And we knew we needed to improve the uh, leak sealing capability. Um, concurrent with those discussions, we had already started talking with uh, Henry Adams, who owned Leak Sealers and had created Leak Sealers. And uh, we just eventually formed a really good relationship with him. And both uh, parties had kind of the same outlook and same insight on servicing customers and ultimately just decided it was best to go ahead and combine the companies and move forward in that direction. Yeah. Yeah, James, and I'll allow you to get into this a little bit, which is you know, let's dig into some of the services offered by ISS and Leak Sealers. So I know a lot of folks are familiar with really both companies, but for folks that aren't, uh, give me a sure. quick rundown on, give, give me a rundown on the, the value proposition. The value proposition we provide, um, it's a multi-package services, so it reduces the vendor outlook for the customer base, but we do online leak repair, um, hot tapping and line isolations, um, on-site machining, and then also we do uh, bolting and heat treatment. So those are the primary services. Also some valve repair that we get involved with and, and that is what we do. That's a, a nice base for the customers as far as the a package that they like to see with, with the uh, providers. And James, you're able to handle some emergency work as well? We do handle emergency work as actually quite a bit of the uh, leak repair work is treated as emergency work. So that comes out, we're able to uh, design and with, with picking up leak sealers, we're able to design and, and turn clamps within 24 to 36 hours and get them installed when it's, when it's necessary with, with the customer. So it is a, uh, um, can be a very uh, emergency based service. And James, geographically, uh, mostly Gulf Coast, tell everybody, uh, you know, about how far you guys uh, tend to. Sure, down. we're primarily, I mean, uh, we're heavily concentrated in the Gulf Coast, but we're into uh, Louisiana, um, the uh, Southeast and the Mississippi, Alabama area, and then also up in New Jersey. And we're in beginning to, to have a better presence within the Midwest. So in the Chicago, Chicagoland area. So that's where we are right now. Yeah, I guess some uh, customer relationships have kind of brought you to some areas outside of the Gulf Coast. So. We did. ISS was already instant. I should also say we're in we're in the uh, um, um, Ontario area of, of Canada also. So we we picked that up with ISS. So you know, right now in our minds, the the kind of the biggest market that we're not able to touch is the the California and some of the West Coast market. Although we do have some customers that are pulling us into that um, kind of on a on a long distance. Um, situation on some turnarounds. Sure. And uh, James, you, you talked a little bit about um, ISS and, and League Sealers merger. I want to talk a little bit about safety. So uh, what kind of safety programs or changes have been initiated and what can we see from the safety side of what? Uh, sure. Yeah, we look, we both, both companies had a very high level of, 
of safety uh, emphasis and, and, and managed over the last five plus years to have zero incidents at all. And we want to continue that. And so that's really from the very much the top down as far as the requirement. But to, but to keep that moving, we emphasize heavily the requirements for the technicians to perform to our policies and to our procedures. That's a very strict requirement that's both with the safety of them, the safety of the customers that, that those are required. And then we also want to make sure that they're very cognizant even outside of the plant. A lot of the uh, kind of things that, that we hit a lot and more frequently is actually outside of the actual business, which is getting to and from the plants on, on the road. And so that's some of the focus that we are putting out there so we're emphasizing that um, driving safety. And then also we're putting some systems in place that will provide um, you know, toolbox talks, safety talks, safety lessons, and also the ability to capture um, close calls in different instances that'll put that into the, uh, the technician's um, PDA into their phone so that they can track and be able to really follow that more closely. So that's what we're trying to begin rolling out as we combine the companies. We've put some additional um, field observation people on the safety side out, out also. Uh, thanks, James, for that update on the safety side of the business. So James, uh, let's get into culture a little bit. You know, um, what defines the culture at the company and, and talk a little bit about your values. Sure, we look, the biggest thing is we wanna provide um, you know, great service to the customer and that's the culture. And the big thing there is responsiveness. We found, especially in the leak repair business, responsiveness and the ability to provide information, um, designs and that to the customer on a, on a quick turnaround is very critical. So that's something that, that we keep and we, and we move closely to. Overall, the, the companies were very closely aligned as far as how they operated, how the uh, um, companies were set up. And, and that allowed us to really move on an operational basis with very few hiccups and, and, and very smoothly to put everybody into place. So it's been a nice, a nice merger in that regard. Thanks, James. Let's uh, step back a little bit, maybe a thousand foot view. Uh, what's the growth potential for the organization and where, where do you see, um, where you see you guys headed? Yeah, right now, I mean, we have kind of the, we have the, service set that we want to have. And, and so we're looking there now to actually then provide and expand our services within the existing customer base. As I mentioned, um, leak sealers was primarily a leak repair business. So we have a huge opportunity to carry our additional services into that customer base. And we're seeing the customers welcome that opportunity. There's really only one other competitor in the industry that has a full suite of services um with the footprint that we have and that's team and so now we see ourselves really being able to grow and and, and see some market um, growth with just providing that to the customer base we'll look at some additional geographies um, especially growth into the uh, midwest that we want to get into and that's the focus and that'll be the you know the the focus for the near term is to really get that set up and we see a lot of ability to grow with just that and James, are there any other comments you have on uh, future investments and uh, sort of your expectations in the next two or three years? Well, we're looking at, I mean, we'll look at some additional investments. We maybe want to strengthen some of the service lines that we offer. Um, and then if there's opportunities to expand the footprint that makes sense, then we'll look at those, at those uh, acquisitions. So that is something that we certainly are open to and, and some different potential add-ons. And, and keep looking for that. But we'll also invest in just greenfield growth. And that's something that, that we work with our partners on is to really understand the cost of that greenfield growth and the time frame in order to make the, the turnarounds on those. That makes a lot of sense, James. Okay, James, well, enough talk about business. Let's get a little bit personal here. So uh, I know you're an Oklahoma State sports fan, but uh, what are some other things people don't know about you? Oh, well, I do. My hobby is I spend my time sailing when I'm not at work. So that's the, the big thing. Um, but, you know, that's that's my time and what I enjoy to do. But, yeah, and also try to follow the Cowboys. They, it's a little hard to find them sometimes down here in Houston. But right. uh, 
but enjoy that, enjoy the time off. And it's a great place in Houston to be close to the water and be able to get out and enjoy the water quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, mostly take your boat in the area, or uh, what about out? You know, how far have you gone? No, we take the we take the boat mostly in the area. I'll do. I've done some sailing trips where you know go to other places and 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 hop around a little bit. But for here, it's just out in the bay and enjoying that as far as the time out there on the water. Well, uh, thanks, James. Well, I consider it an inv invite. So next time you go out, appreciate the invite. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> All right, man. Well, James had a blast talking to you. Let's just wrap up this interview. There's going to be more from you guys in the future. And we're just grateful uh, for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And for those who are interested in learning more about industrial specialty services, visit isservices.com. Hey, as always, we are most grateful for our audience. Please like and share this recording with your colleagues. For more industry news, videos, webinars, and podcasts, visit bicmagazine.com. Hey, remember everybody, it's what we do together that counts.